a fan and brisket. I got my barbecue shoes on. Welcome to BarbecuePitBoys.com. Today we're cooking up some pineapple hams on the grill. And of course, they're real easy to do. All right, what I have here is a couple of pre-cooked, water-cured hams. They're ready to eat. They're real common. You can find them most anywhere. And uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna be roasting these on the grill. And uh, let me show you how we're gonna put this together. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug them with some bacon and uh, we uh, smoked up some bacon here not crisp we want it uh, partially cooked because this bacon is gonna baste the inside of these hams all right and uh, you just make maybe six or seven plugs around each ham real easy to do you take a knife make a slit just like that and then you stuff it with some bacon real easy right Look at that. Now, if you've never had pineapple hams before, you're definitely going to have to check this recipe out. This is going to be some good eating. We're going to turn this one into a holiday ham. Good enough for a Sunday dinner. <clears throat> All right. I'll show you a few more plugs here. Simple enough, right? All right. Now we're gonna make these hams look real pretty. Like I said, we're gonna make them real fancy here. And uh, we can do that with some sliced pineapple and some uh, cherries, all right? You take a toothpick, stab the cherry, and hang a slice of pineapple. Now these hams are going to take about 20-25 minutes per pound. These uh, are 8 pounders each. We're doing about 16 pounds here. Uh, this could take 3 to 4 hours. Depends uh, how well you manage the heat on the grill. But we're going to be setting this grill at about ooh, 325 degrees. And we're looking for a 140 degree internal uh, temperature on these because they're pre-cooked. Um, so 140 is about where you want to go. You go too much higher than that and you're going to start drying out these hams. Now, here I've got some cloves. We'll put a half a dozen cloves in each ham. I told you these are going to be fancy. <laughs> All right. These hams ready for the grill. Now, indirect, opposite the hot coals. If you've been watching us, you know all about that. And here I've got some more pineapple juice. I'm going to throw some on the bottom of this pan, and it's going to uh, keep it real moist and tender. All right? A little bit of cherry juice. <laughs> yeah. And because we're doing two hams, I'm going to use one of these uh, electronic probes. All right? Each one is going to have its own probe, its own temperature, because they will cook differently. All right? Now these are one of the better inventions for barbecue. These uh, electronic temp probes, yeah, yeah, they make it real easy. And you don't have to lift the cover of the uh, grill much because you know exactly what your internal temperatures are. In fact, even the ambient temperature here. It's all set and ready. All right. Now, like I said, this could take three to four hours at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, while we're waiting, we're going to make up a glaze. And this here is a Coke glaze. You may have seen this before. All you do is use some Coke and some brown sugar. We're going to use about two cups of Coke here. And a couple of cups of brown sugar. Now, you can uh, use what glaze you like, but this is kind of simple tastes real good. 
Oh, and uh, by the way, if you haven't already, please sub us. We've got a lot more recipes coming your way, and we really appreciate your support. All right. Now, through the miracle of time, a couple hours has gone by, and this is where we're going to start using that glaze, all right? So, uh, I'm going to use this Coke brown sugar glaze here and get it all over these hams. It's going to bring out a lot of color and some brown sugar taste. Man, it looked good enough to eat already, but we've got a little while to go. All right, one of these hams, it's got an internal temperature of about 142, 143, and we're gonna pull it off. The other one's got a little more time to go. Oh. You hungry or what? Now, what we're gonna do is, uh, Take this ham that's already at 140. We're gonna wrap it in some aluminum foil. We're gonna let it sit for at least a half hour. Continue to cook and tenderize the ham. Oh, man. Now, I wanna pull these uh, toothpicks out of here. Give it a wrap. This will also allow all those juices, man, to uh, repermeate that meat. You know all about that, right? Now, I'm gonna continue to cook the other ham. Mm. Baste it one more time. Getting hungry or what? <laughs> ah, yeah. All right. Another half hour's gone by, and this ham is ready to slice. Whoa. Look at that. Now, what you want to do before slicing, of course, is locate that bone. Best way to do that. Go after the flat side, run the knife along the bone. Now you locate the bone, flip it over, and cut away the meat. There you go. Like that. And then you look for the grain right there. You want to cut across the grain. That makes it real tender. It's going to melt in your mouth, as you can see right there. Whoa. There's some good eating right there. It's gonna make a real fine sandwich. And you can see that bacon plug right there. Mm. I say it's time to eat. Now, you can present these hams any way you want, at a fancy dinner, or the way we like, just a big old sandwich, rye bread, and a little bit of mustard. And of course, as always, we do apologize for eating in front of you like this. But you know what? This is Pitmaster Privilege. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. So the next time you're looking for a ham recipe for your barbecue, you check out barbecuepitboys.com.